I'm really glad that you brought this up because I do see some common mistakes when it comes to DTF transfers and people wondering why they're not getting the best quality. So in this video, I'm actually going to walk you through everything that you need to know when it comes to getting high quality prints and good DTF transfers that come out vibrant and are really good when it comes to picture quality. So let's get into it. So one of the top mistakes that I see is that people print DTF transfers without having a transparent image. And when that happens, people wonder why they have a white background behind their image and that wasn't their intention. So for one, you wanna make sure the editing tool that you use like Canva, Photoshop, you're getting that transparent image but if you're not sure if your image is transparent, this is my favorite website to go to, remove.bg, and it offers free background removal. So in the event that you're not sure if an image is transparent, all you have to do is upload your image and then download. And that's all you have to do. And then it's gonna pull up an image that is a transparent file with no background. So when you upload this to CAD link, you'll be able to print it out without having a white background. It will only print the image itself. That's the first mistake that I see all the time, but let's get into a few more. All right, so this is the image that I just removed the background on, but let me show you the power of CAD link and the tool that we didn't even know that was there that I use a lot to help me prepare my image. So if you highlight your image and make sure that the blue box is around it, if you go to the words and right click, then you want to go to edit with GIMP, G-I-M-P. And this software comes with CAD link automatically and it looks like this. Now, you'll know that the image is transparent when you see these little gray and black boxes around it. That's telling you that the image is transparent and there's no background. If this was all white, then that's a problem and I need to remove the background. So for one, what I like to do in here is go to image and then scale image. So what you will wanna do first, where it says pixels slash inches, this answers the question above. You wanna make sure that it's always at 300 resolution. This is going to guarantee that you have a high quality image that prints out. Now, you also want to go up here after you change the resolution, change this to inches so that way you can understand what it's going to look like. And I want this image to be like an 11 by 11, just so I can have a standard t-shirt size. And I'm going to hit scale. It's gonna make it big, but all I have to do is zoom out and that's what the image will look like. What I also like to do in GIMP is play with my colors. This is a very vibrant design and I wanna make sure my colors pop. So what I can do here is go to colors and then go to brightness and contrast. And one tip that I always recommend is brightness goes down some and contrast goes up and you can see she kind of gets darker and the colors become a little bit more vibrant and you just kind of want to play around until you see something that you like i already messed with the image some originally so it's not really too much more that i can do but you can see as i click around the colors of the hair and the colors just change. So it all depends on what you want. So I would just recommend if the colors aren't coming out as vibrant as you would like them to, to just come here and play with the brightness and contrast. And like I said, a good rule of thumb is the brightness goes down, contrast goes up, and you just keep playing until you find something that you like. Then you'll hit okay. And then you wanna go to file, and you want to export as, save it, 
somewhere on your desktop just so that way you can easily find it. And you always want to make sure it says .png instead of anything else. So make sure it says .png. All right. Then you'll just hit export and you'll hit export again. Then it's going to save to your computer once that bar finished loading. And once I do that, all I got to do is go back to file, find the image on my desktop, bring it back. And you see how it's now 11 by 11 when before it was a five by five. I make sure I had the 300 DPI. Now I can hit print, but you want to make sure you always drag it to the top before you hit print and then print it. And that's how you make sure that you have a really good image every single time when you're trying to print from CAD link on these Epson 8550 printers. Peace.